Catch this rhythm. You feel that? That's called playerism. I'm on the scene, a player clean, poker face, four queens. I got four of a kind on everything. Diggers living elite. I don't feel complete without kicking at my feet in a Rolls Royce every week. Maybe this is deep. Listen close when I speak. I need to at least, cause I'm too much. I'll be a fool if I love him, love him. You'll be a fool if you trust him, trust him. Here with my niggas, we keeping it gangsta. gangsta. Yeah, I'm a slayer, I'm just keeping it player. Player, player, player. I'm fucking her now, we're man, eating it later. Uh. That's maybe why he is a hater. Hater, 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 hater. I'm wearing all black like I'm being a raider. Raider, 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 raider. You talk to police, we call you a traitor. Traitor, traitor. I'm running the city, they call me for favors. I'm running the city, they call me the mayor. Yeah. Medical witness, my chief presidential chief. Yeah. Yeah. Canary diamonds as I'm flying. Canary islands on a one way. Fresh Easter Sunday. Yes, I touched the runway. Yeah, bless. She looks like she just left the runway. She want to stay with me in this Disney fantasy and never go home like a runaway. I'll be up before the daylight. That's why I'm getting paid, right? I'll be all in. I'll be all in. I work hard and play hard until I hit the graveyard. I'll be all in. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. It's the big homie, the one and only Fax Kellerman, Stephen A. P.M. Your favorite YouTubers, favorite YouTuber, the talk of the internet, Marquette Devon Burton, the saint and the sinner. I know you guys all showed up. Some of you guys are fans of Jordan Peterson. It get like that. I'm just here to bring the facts per usual. Please do pay attention for this will be very precise and we have nothing but facts here. I'm happy to have a debate with you. If you feel strongly about something, go ahead and send it in by a super chat. Say what's on your mind, but we're only talking truth this time. Before we get done with that, I have a special treat for you all. We have a number of live sessions uh, that are upcoming. They've been pre-scheduled with phenomenal people, meaningful conversations. I am going to yield the floor to Janelle to tell you about something cool that you guys absolutely need to click that subscribe button for on this channel, but also more importantly, click the notify button on the link I'm going to put in the chat. Janelle, talk to the people. Hello. Hello. My name is Janelle Moyes. So basically, Marquette and I will be going live on November the 13th to speak about basically how Black men can get Black women under control. So please tune in. As he said, please click the notification button so you will be informed. Absolutely. And you're going to give the fella some game, huh? Oh, gosh. I hope so. (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) All right. All right. Well, it'll be a real pleasure to talk with you. And we are going to make sure that before we go live on that session on November 13th, which is at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time, we'll put all Janelle's info uh, for her YouTube channel, for her Instagram in the description so you all can catch up with her and the things that she's doing. Janelle, thank you so much for taking out this time uh, to notify the folks of what's coming up. Definitely. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Folks, let's get to this work. Per usual, let us start by showing love to those who show love to us. May I first acknowledge Mergen, who came in before the live session even started. He says, peace to the saints. The lecture on the United Kingdom problem was very insightful. And thank you very much for that. That one is actually uh, just for the members at patreon.com slash the same center, as well as the other member sites. So if you are a member there, you'll be able to see that one. Uh, we we're talking about the major issue with illegal migration, fake asylum seekers coming into the UK, spending seven million pounds a day draining the UK taxpayer. But anyways, today we're talking about Jordan Peterson. Oh, and there's much to talk about. And for the, the acolytes of Jordan Peterson who brainlessly follow, we are going to school you today. And this is not to say that Jordan Peterson is not an intelligent man. This is not to say he is not a lettered man. This is not to say he doesn't say things that are correct or bring forward meaningful information. Oh, we have some mentally ill people already. Here they are. And per usual, I'd love to invite you on to shred you. And here's the great thing about it. I already know you're weak before you come on. How do I know you're weak? Because you follow a weak leader. 
And how do I know you're weak? Because you don't have your photo up. You don't have your full name. Men stand on their name, my dear boy. And let me go ahead and drop that link. And it's not for anybody but this little psychopath right here because I'm feeling mighty vicious today. I can't even lie to you. I'm feeling that way and it's going to get like that. Now, do remember, if you come on this live stream, make sure your camera's turned on. And make sure you got your full name because my name is Marquette Devon Burton, you dig? And that's a name that's like gold around this whole planet Earth in a real way. Get your hurt in some places depending on what you say. So you guys be careful out there. You dig? Now, first and foremost, let's see if we have anybody on Cash App or PayPal. No, we don't. Make sure you guys hit the like to wipe your feet when you come in. They told me the likes are free. Jesus paid for it, apparently. Um, now, may we first acknowledge the folks who support the work. Shout out to Major. He writes, peace to the saints tuition. I'm ready for this one. There are too many false idols out here. You dig. False prophets, fake leaders, all kinds of things. Beta males positioning as alpha males. We're in a spooky reality. Sheep in wolf's clothing. You know what? That's a good way to put it. Sheep in wolf's clothing. Yes, indeed. And I'm a wolf in wolf's clothing. Scary. Do your thing, Saint, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to Xavier Nash, who consistently supports the work. Shout out to Nate for supporting as well. Chris writes, peace to the Saints tuition. Jordan P has strong ideals, but a weak frame. Does he have ideals? Do men not live by their ideals? Is he living as a strong man? Or is he just collecting hella money from people who are in mental turmoil and then also trying to turn around and pass the bag off to his daughter who has... Letters? Is she a PhD? No. Has she a history of helping people? Is she a self-help guru? No. Oh, I think he just said, hey, I'm getting all this money. I got a name. Let me pass some of this fame and money off to you, even though you're not qualified to help anyone. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about it today. Shout out to Anthony. Comes through with the support. Chris writes, Peace to the Saints, a review of the recent interview between Patrick Bet Davis And Antonio Brown from you would be not only educational, but highly entertaining. Please consider it. I have not a clue who those persons are, um, but let me write that down. Take a screenshot of this and feel free to remind me again on Patreon.com because I don't have a pen and paper handy for I am uh, traveling at the moment. So feel free to remind me. I'll take a look into it. Yes, indeedy. Oh, and by the way, did anyone notice that that Jordan Peterson nerd never hit the like, uh, the the join call button? Oh, he must be scared. I'm not surprised. You follow a guy with no bass in his voice. You follow a guy who's talking as though someone is squeezing his testicles. We're going to talk about it. Oh, yes, indeed. This is your king? Come on, give me a break. Oh, you're following a therapist who has mental health issues. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, can we not say the truth out here anymore? Yeah, no, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. And there's no disrespect. I'm just, it's just the facts, if you don't mind. If you don't mind, we're going to stick to the facts today. Yeah, pay close attention. Just want to make sure that I don't uh, skip anyone who's supporting the work. And then we're, we want to dig in. We're going to dig in. Said Jordan Peterson has strong ideals. Now, men live by ideals, men die for ideals. Now, they to speak of something is one thing. It has been stated before that we have many people who speak philosophy but don't live philosophy. Mm. Man speaks of good mental health. He he's schooled in, in mental health, but it turns out that he's suffering mental health issues and was a drug addict of psychotropic drugs. So the thing he's supposed to prescribe to others to heal them, he is himself abusing? And that's a leader? On what planet? Shout out to none of the above 101. On what planet? Shout out to Gabriel. On what planet? Blizzak Reviews writes, happy to see you at 100K salutations. I appreciate that. And you know what? Us reaching 100K is really only by the will of God because I've been shadow banned. I've been blocked. I've been uh, suspended. All of the above. And all it is for is for speaking unadulterated truth. Truth with no filler. Truth with no filter. That's all we've done. We've not used any significant vulgarity. We've just spoken truth. And that's what is slowed us down, the forces of evil. You even have the forces of evil in this very chat. Oh yeah, by the way, shout out to the ballers, 
Ball alert, alert. Donovan writes, peace, brother Marquette, and peace to the Saints. Had to put some numbers on the board again this afternoon. The big homies stay chopping heads, foreign and domestic, in a real way, and it's absolutely necessary. And I'm not saying Jordan Peterson isn't a, an all right guy. I'm just saying see it for what it is. I would have respected it if he didn't take his daughter and start having her suck money from the people who follow him. I would have respected it, but that was particularly tacky to me. That's like me sending out one of my women to go get your money. You ever heard of me like sending my mom or my brother? By the way, I have a brother. That'd be like, you know, Andrew Tate has his brother, Tristan, who like people really don't know as well, but, you know, sends him out there to make some money too. That's like me sending my brother out there to make some money. No, no, this is not what my brother does. Let him do what he does. I'm not going to send him out there with a collection plate. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. I find it disgusting. I ain't going to lie to you. Shout out to Anthony. And, and we're going to go through the facts of it. Hamilcar Barker writes, it's your boy from Carthage. <laughs> Just showing love, always keeping it a beam piece of the saints. And people hate the truth. My Lord, they hate the truth. I think that's what happened to Copernicus. CJ Bailey writes, peace of the saints, always dropping the wisdom. Oh, please believe it. Please believe it. Y'all ready for this work? May I acknowledge via PayPal, Sadiq writes, I've been following you for a while now. This is my second tuition. Thank you for the knowledge you provide to us. I appreciate you. Greetings from the Netherlands, Sadiq. Truly appreciate that I was just in the Netherlands. I think I got to get outside of Amsterdam. It really was not my look. You did? Because in, in my case, I don't use drugs. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't use alcohol and I don't patronize whores. And that's pretty much all that you're going to find in Amsterdam. Let's get this work. Here we go. Now, this first clip I have is one that just establishes a foundation. Now, one of the challenges with people who are uneducated, i.e. the majority of the Internet. So you have people who are uneducated. Then you have people who are educated. Then you have people who are educated, but still stupid. Right. So th there's levels to things. You know, if you're uneducated, that doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you're uneducated, less likely to be familiar with certain works certain works of fiction, certain works of philosophy, certain works of sociology, psychology, etc., which is why so many of you think Jordan Peterson is brilliant, and that's only because you're an unschooled, sophomoric youth. You've not been exposed to the basics of knowledge that most educated persons around the planet Earth are already familiar with. Hence, he says something that is not new to those who are educated and informed, but it's new to you. And you falsely assign that idea to Jordan Peterson when he's merely repeating something that he read in a book, just as you could have did, but you did not do. OK, that's number one, because a lot of what he says, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've heard that before. In fact, I, I've read that. That was B.F. Skinner. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, I read that. That was Malcolm Gladwell. So all Jordan Peterson specializes in is bringing academic knowledge to a mainstream audience, removing the pedantic nature of the information, simplifying it so that it is palatable to you. He's similar to a Malcolm Gladwell. He's similar to a uh, Robert Greene. Just as I always tell you guys, Robert Greene has not written anything original. He just bootlegged books like The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli, books that you're not going to read, haven't read, and probably wouldn't understand if you did read. And so he takes those ideas, makes them simple for you, and you think this guy's a genius. More quit. have you read 48 Laws of Power? Yeah, I read it quickly because it's not complex. And I also read the important book that preceded it. We going to get into it now. And shout out to Ibrahim for supporting the work. Now, listen to Jordan Peterson himself acknowledge that he's mostly just sharing information that he's heard from other scholars. Mind you, Jordan Peterson is radically different than, say, a Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky, similarly, is an academic, a PhD, but he was groundbreaking in his chosen field, meaning that people in the field of linguistics were like, Yo, son is serious. Like, he's the guy in this area of knowledge. He's a groundbreaking intellectual. Jordan Peterson is not that. Jordan Peterson is an intellectual for sure. Very smart, very educated, but he's not a groundbreaker in terms of his discipline. I just want that to be known. Another thing that both of them do is they go outside of their discipline and speak on things they're not expert in. Noam Chomsky is not an expert 
in politics, but most of his books have been in politics, books like Failed States, um, books about what happened in Venezuela, books about geopolitics. He's a linguist, but he's writing about politics quite intelligently. And Noam Chomsky is one of the foremost thinkers in global politics, but that is not his area of expertise by training. Surely he's an expert by now. Similarly, Jordan Peterson is speaking about a variety of topics which he is not an expert in. Because he has a PhD, some people, mostly those who are not learned, are foolish enough to take him as an expert in something he's not expert in, okay? Now, here's another funny thing. If I was a mechanic, right, I'm an expert in being a car mechanic, wouldn't you look at me weird if I had a car that didn't work? I repeat, if I was an expert in car mechanics, meaning I repair cars, but my car doesn't work, you would think I was a nut, a liar, a fraud, a charlatan. How is it you have a guy who's a psychologist, a, a therapist, one who studies the mind and tries to fix it, but has his own mental issues and he's hopped up on meds and is a drug addict? Well, that's the same thing as having a mechanic who can't fix his own car. Tell me I'm wrong. Why am I so passionate? Because the levels of idiocy, it overwhelms me. How can you be that stupid? How can you be that stupid? Furthermore, he's in, he has issues with depression, which is fine. People have issues. And he projects his own issues onto you. Writes a book and says, you shouldn't pursue happiness you should focus on doing good deeds. Why you say that, Jordan? Because you're mostly not happy. Is that why you say that, Jordan? Because you're mostly not happy? You've been suicidal as you yourself have stated? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with suicidal. I'm just saying there's much wrong. There's much wrong with being a leader of the youth while being suicidal and not having your mind together. For you might be leading them in the wrong direction, or you might be bleeding out the toxins that are in your mind and soul and heart into others, telling people not to pursue happiness. When this human life is challenging, and for someone to not pursue their own piece of happiness, however fleeting, is a very dark, depressing perspective. And why would he give you a depressing perspective? Because he's a depressed person. There's some certain persons I don't trust because I know they went into that field of study to study themselves. Why? Because human beings are self-interested, me monsters. He's trying to figure himself out, figure out what's going on with me that has me bouncing off the walls. Alpha writes tuition for the big homie. I see you, I see you put your own sauce on the suggested title. I was looking forward to this stream as soon as I saw it. Oh, indeed. And we're just getting warmed up. There's so much more to come. Shout out to Marcus comes in with the tuition. But not Cody writes, quote, trying too hard, end quote. When is this a good thing? And when is this a bad thing? Peace to the saints. You see, when people say trying too hard, I think they might be uh, pointing out that, you know, you're breaking the sweat when in reality, a vet doesn't need to sweat, right? You need to do things with finesse and smoothness, which is to say, keep it player. But that should not suggest that you're not putting in great effort. The truth is the things that have the greatest reward in life require significant effort. And the greatest of rewards most people won't have because they're not willing to put in the effort. Most people are self-saboteurs. I couldn't tell you how many individuals I encounter on a regular basis who sabotage themselves. It's not racism. It's not the world holding them down. It's mostly you holding you down. Shout out to Directed by Jabrizi. He writes, I never got the hype behind Jordan Peterson. He always seemed basic. And he is. He's worse off than you and I. <laughs> when you're thinking about killing yourself, <laughs> you're worse off than the average person. I mean, consider this. How does he position himself as a life coach? Life. A life coach, yet he's thinking constantly of death, killing himself. Come on, man. How's that add up? It doesn't. Marcos writes, peace to the saints, tuition. And I sent you a message through IG with an update on the orientation. Fantastic. I look forward to hearing it. And saints, we're optimizing so many of our organizational processes uh, so that things are institutionalized and we can spread this around the entire planet Earth. For the Earth is in need of great leadership. Shout out to Xmar. He writes, peace to the saints. Rolo criticized Jordan Peterson for saying incels are 
fill in the blank. Okay. Also, his daughter did her ex-husband dirty. Oh, his daughter's divorced. Oh, she's divorced. Can't keep a man. Can't maintain a relationship. I'm shocked. Maybe daddy didn't raise her right. Didn't teach her much. Because he was so busy dealing with his own issues. Yeah, it turns out when you become a parent, that's when you surrender your self-interest and you are focused on those children so that they might succeed. Everything needs to go to them. That's why I've not had any children because I'm still trying to live like James Bond, you dig? Or I guess I should say live like Marquette Devon, you dig? <laughs> in a real way, in a real way. Uh, shout out to Mr. Adam. He writes, working construction, had to tune into the big home piece of the saints. Thank you for everything you do, sir. The red P-I-L-L, misguided and lowered my confidence. Bruh, they are so lost. And when you follow the loss, they will mislead you. He writes, the ism is the light and putting me on the right path. Indeed, may we all be guided to the straight path. Shout out to Trevor who supports the work. Three digits comes in with the support as well as Mr. Douglas. Truly appreciate it. He writes, his daughter's 100% low value, right? So we got a divorcee. We have a divorcee giving advice to the masses. Whatever happened to learning how to play basketball from Michael Jordan? This is not Michael Jordan. How's he going to teach you how to live when he doesn't want to live? He's not the Michael Jordan of the life coach or of the therapist. No, he's the bench warmer. He's the one who gets kicked off the team because he's failing at life. I don't care how much fame or money you have. If you want to end your own life, you are not winning. That's the problem in our sick society. We've misplaced values. Yes, we've misplaced values. And that is why I am here to bring them back to center stage, you see? Yes. Shout out to Bashir. He writes, Peace of the Saints. Can't catch the live stream as I'm about to do some work for a client. Indeed, carry forward. Sending my contribution in advance. You've helped me immensely in improving my personal and financial aspirations. Keep at it, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I will, I will not stop. And even when I do stop, the, con the organization will continue on. You dig? We building for the future. Oh, by the way, shout out to the ballers. Baller alert, Dalton writes, for doing the work, peace to the saints in a real way. May I also acknowledge Alaric, who comes in with tuition. And saints, give me one second, because the heat is working too well here. Give me a sec. I'll be right back. All right, let's get this work. Let's get this work. Man, and you guys might be saying, Marquette, why, why are you always chopping heads off? Why can't we all get along? Oh, we can get along, but we must establish the appropriate hierarchy. Yeah, we can get along once everything is in order. Absolutely. Yeah, we can all get along. But everybody going to have to fall in line into where they're supposed to be first. Yeah, then once everything is ordered, then we can get along even better. In a real way. Yeah, we ain't going to slap five so everything is, is all set correctly. Now let's get into this. Here's Jordan Peterson, and he's about to say what is obvious to people who are educated, but what may be a mystery to people who are uneducated. You see, the problem is that the governments around the world are wicked, which means the public schools are very low quality, which means it's yielding low quality human beings who are not schooled in the basics, the basics of logic the basics of character, even the basics of arithmetic, and certainly not even the basics of English. So few people in America with English as their first language can speak English well. It, it's a real pity. Now, check this out. This is Jordan Peterson in his own words admitting that he is no brilliant genius. He's just repeating what he studied, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I quote people all the time, as you should. Now, here, here he goes too because you know you like i said at the beginning you, if you're surfing you don't want to take responsibility for the wave and so you know i mean first of all a lot of what i've been telling people are things that i've gleaned from the clinical liter and the psychological literature it's not i'm gonna repeat that he says most of what i've been telling people are things that i've gleaned that is gathered from the psychological literature what is the literature the research and the writings of whom him no of others so he's merely repeating back to you what he has learned in his course of study. 
be it his dissertation or his postdoc affairs. Oh, so no, you're not dealing with Einstein. You're dealing with a guy who's sharing what he learned. That's it. Yeah. Shout out to Kyle, writes Peace of the Saints. Oh, yeah. And by the way, bring the ballers back out. Baller alert. Shout out to Ricardo. Very consistent. Rice peace to the saints. And I want you all to know there's there's no crime in, you know, sharing knowledge that you've gathered. But there is a great crime in dimwitted people or uneducated people or youthful people thinking that someone's brilliant when they're not. And I want you guys to know that based on what Jordan Peterson has brought to the Internet, any one of us could have done it. We just got to read the books and then speak up on it. He's never said, hey, guys. I want to share with you an original theory. I figured out something that you haven't figured out that the academics, the academy hasn't figured out. It's called Jordan Peterson's theory of this. No, he's not done that. He's not done that. And I'm not saying he has to. I just want you to understand who you're dealing with. Carrying on. Not like I'm coming up with this of my own accord, right? I'm transmitting information that I've learned from very, very wise people. I'm going to so say that again. But also, it's not like I'm coming up with this of my own accord, right? I'm transmitting information that I've learned from very, very wise people. And so there's that. But also, we don't want... He just said, it's not like I'm coming up with this on my own accord. Exactly. Which is to say, you read a Jordan Peterson book... All you are reading is a collection of the theories of other people simplified. It is not original thought. You read the black box. Those are true stories, original stories and original perspective. I got another book I'm writing right now. That will be a groundbreaking book in literature. It will be original thought. Why? Because I'm a technologist speaking of how technology has impacted morality and that area of philosophy is much underdeveloped. Why? Because engineers, math minds are generally not philosophers and are not good with uh, uh, language. Math minds are good with numbers. But my mind has been able to bring together the technology of today and understand how the technology has impacted morality. Oh, we will talk about it. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, where did that nerd go? I was waiting on that one nerd uh, to get online. It, it seems like he won't come. I hope that anytime a saint speaks up, like he like he poking his chest out, I want him to really show up. I, that's what I teach. Hey, keep your mouth closed. But if you're going to boss up, boss all the way up. That's how we live out here. Shout out to Major. He writes, there are too many parrots nowadays. You ain't never lied. Just repeating what they hear, right? Ain't even verified anything. Where is the original thought? Peace to the saints. And I would have left Jordan Peterson where he was at. Wouldn't have had to drag him through the dirt like this until he said, hey, sis, come get this bag. Now you're turning this into a, a money grab. That's not righteous. That's not righteous. You already had enough money from your speaking tours, your multi-million dollar Patreon, and then you bring your idiotic daughter who's a dumb broad, who's divorced and devoid of morals, and you bring her out in front as an example to spew her idiocy onto the masses? Yeah, I'm outraged. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm outraged. Shout out to none of the above 101 writes, none of the few clips I recall from JP was him directing the 1% man to settle with one woman. Thought that was strange. As smart as his fans proclaim he is, right? It, the funny thing is his fans also think they're smart too. Um, and this is not to say he doesn't say things that are meaningful and he's not a meaningful uh, you know, representative of truth, of intelligence, of logic. He is often. But sometimes he says things that are patently stupid. And only people who are intelligent and educated can point it out. For example, he was on a podcast and he stated the Bible was the first book. What? what? Wait, wait, what'd you say, Jordan? The Bible was the first book. And he says it with this certainty and that ultra feminine voice he has. That voice, it sounds like someone squeezing your balls really hard. It's like, yeah, the, the Bible was the first book. No, that's dumb. And that's not true. And everyone who has any minimal amount of knowledge knows that. Now, if you were saying maybe the Bible is one of the first widely distributed books, 
you might have almost made sense. If you're referencing the Gutenberg press and the Gutenberg Bible, then you would have almost made sense. But otherwise, you're telling a bald faced lie. But people who are not knowledgeable can't tell the difference. That's why I'm here. Carrying on. We're going to get into it. We just warming up out here. This is full play. This is for play. Malo writes, been listening to you for about the past month. Hallelujah. The jewels you drop are enlightening and empowering. Talk to me. Unlike a lot of other rhetoric on YouTube, and it's all rhetoric, they don't live what they say. You know, you see the big homie in real life. I'm really what you what you thought I was. You did when I was in Mumbai, I was walking out of my uh, hotel and the cat's like, hey, I know who you are. And for a second, I was thinking, nah, there's no way you know who I am. I'm, I'm on the low in India. I don't expect anybody to know who I am. So you're the same in the center. Can we take a picture of the yeah, for sure? But the thing was, when he encountered me, he encountered me in the way you would expect to encounter me either covered in sweat, getting a good workout in, or looking like I just stepped out of a movie. You dig? Looking like they should have had the red carpet rolled out. You're only going to see me in one of those two ways. That's it. In real life. And I've been living like that my whole life. You dig? Anyways, he writes, I'm also from Baltimore. Shout out. So I salute the work you've done here. Thank you. Work in real life with real kids and families. Real organizations, multi-millions raised by yours truly for families in Baltimore. Not, I've been on the internet babbling and people say they my their life has been changed because they read my book. No, no, no. No, Marquette went into my house. Marquette talked to my mother. Marquette paid our light bill. Marquette got me a job. Marquette taught me technology skills. Marquette was in my church and he ain't even a Christian, but he showed up every weekend to tutor people. Yeah, that's different. I need you to know the difference. Shout out to a podcast for men. He writes, I think the problem is conventional intelligence. Okay, tell me more. We base intelligence from degree. No, we don't. Uh, but foolish people tend to associate the two. I get that. He wrote appearance, dialect, and race. I'll give you that. Some people think there's an appearance to intelligence. And he fits the, the bill, right? You know, white guy in a suit. You know, people think that's intelligence. I'm not saying he's not intelligent. He writes, I believe true intelligence is a person's ability to create. I don't know if I'm going to sign off on that. He writes, to go from point A to point B. Fair enough. I always tell people who tell me that they're really smart, I say, well, what do you have to show for it? You know, are you going to show me a, 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 you wrote a book or you, you got a bank account? Like, like, what we got to show for it? Because at the end of the day, it got to add up to something. You heard me? It got to add up to something. Otherwise, you're just talking and you might be deluded. You might think you're smart and not be as smart as you think. Shout out to Mr. New to Town, a.k.a. Twatty Lottie. <laughs> These names are outrageous. John the Don writes, would you be open to debating Jordan Peterson? Well, what's the topic? See, here's the thing. We agree on most of the big stuff, which is that I'm not going to use your gender pronouns of choice because it's ludicrous and it's dishonest and it's an abuse of the English language. We agree on that. We agree on most of what he says because he's referencing science and true facts. So there's really nothing to debate on other than the fact that he's not qualified for his current uh, level of regard that he holds in the like lonely male community, the weak male community. And I think that he's a, a fraudster in as much as he's passing off money to his daughter, who is just as despicable as he is in terms of personal character. So unless he wants to come and debate his personal character, there's really nothing to debate. And his personal character defects are on public display. You can just use your own Google for that um, as mine are being displayed right now. Um, so there's really nothing to debate other than that. He writes, how can the assassin contribute to get you connected with these figures? I think you'd go viral after debating Pierce. Oh, I would body Pierce so bad. And you're right. Uh, Jordan Peterson and Tucker, Tucker Carlson. Indeed. And I think the funny thing is Tucker Carlson, I think, would bow down. I think he's smart enough to know to bow down. I think Jordan Peterson would just look extremely feminine, like a little kitty cat, because you'd be lining up an actual masculine male, one of those savages that he references every now and then, versus him, which is like a little shy, weak, fragile, mentally fragile, physically fragile little person. And he would look really weak standing next to a lion. And then Piers is just an imbecile. So I'd have to just destroy him. I'd have to savage Piers. He's going to go down fighting, but he's going to go down. 
Indeed. He writes, Peterson's daughter is a harlot. Yes, she is. And if I ever had a daughter that through some strange means became a harlot, I would make her change her last name. I would disown her. You did? Because I can't have that representing me. But what I understand is that if you raise up a child in the way of goodness, that child will not stray from the righteous path. That is my understanding. Things don't happen on accident. You dig? So obviously there was some misguidance for her to be misguided. Huh? Talk to me. Shout out to Adam. He writes, Marquette, I described you to my CEO and we concluded that we have some ideas we would love to bring to you. If there's ever any possibility of a short Zoom meeting, I will gladly set everything up. Well, it depends. Shoot me a DM. Let me know what it is. I'm always weary of having meetings that I, I don't know exactly what the outcome is. So let your boy know. Uh, carrying on. I want to underestimate the utility of the technology, right? Because we have this long form technology now and it's enabling us to have this discussion. And so we can get deeper into things publicly and socially than we were able to before. And I see this. So these are called truisms. What he's doing right now is he's, he's speaking a truism. He's basically saying we can bring more information to the public because we can give them lengthy content. That's actually always been true that the public can receive lengthy content. They just had to pay for it before or they had to see it on television and they didn't get to choose the content. Whereas now any person can give lengthy content. That's both good and bad. It's good in as much as there's more access to information than ever. It's bad in as much as any imbecile can make a YouTube channel and there's no credential or requirement, which is why the general quality of the information you get on YouTube is very low. Furthermore, people who actually have money don't need to go on YouTube to tell you how they did what they did, right? There's only a couple people who are on YouTube for valid reasons. Shout out to Maurice. He writes, peace of the saints. Make sure you gentlemen go outside and get some exercise today. Exercise is prayer, Marquette de Bomber, and I appreciate that. True story. I meant to stick to $6 and up. I actually made a mistake. Please forgive me. Thank you for that good message, though. That's a good one to make a mistake on if we ever did make a mistake. Yes. I see this as a manifestation of that. And, and and also another thing with Jordan Peterson is why is it so hard for him to lower his voice just a little bit? It, it's just rough to listen to a voice like that for me. And speaking of his voice, his voice is actually an accurate representation of who he is. You see, with Mike Tyson, his voice doesn't represent him well, right? Mike Tyson has a high-pitched voice, um, and but he's actually a savage, right? Conversely, Jordan Peterson has a high-pitched weak, trembly voice, but it's a perfect representation of what he actually is and, more importantly, what he isn't, okay? What he isn't. And truth be told, I remind you, I wouldn't put him in the frying pan until he sent out his idiotic, immoral daughter to scrape money off of your backs. That's what sent me over the edge, okay? Baller alert, directed by Jabrizi writes, to some degree, you shouldn't be able to talk about women if you don't get women. Woo! Talk to me. Jordan sounds like a fraud when he speaks. You ain't never lying. I mean, because at the end of the day, he's a therapist and bad mental health. I mean, how fraudulent is that? Uh, shout out to Adam comes back in. Gotcha, gotcha. And here we go. Here's Jordan on Piers Morgan. And Piers is another one of those frauds. Piers is a... a he is a creation of the establishment. There are certain things that the government and the media, which is often the same thing, try to get you to accept. The reason we know Piers Morgan is a fraud is because of the following reason. Marquette Devon Burton has 100,000 subscribers. Piers Morgan has double that. But Piers Morgan regularly is interviewing celebrities and doing multi-millions in views regularly. Kanye West, the biggest names on the planet Earth, yet his subscriber count has not gone anywhere. Why? Because the population does not believe him. He's not authentic. We know he's a pawn. Huh? Be aware of that. Also notice every now and then you watch a, a news clipping on YouTube from one of the big companies, CNN, CNBC, and you look at the comments, you're like, oh, I wonder what people are saying about this. And the comments are turned off. Why? Because they do not want you to know that other people are thinking like you. So they turn the comments off. They just want you to hear what they got to say in the video. Here's a good representation of Jordan Peterson. Um, people have been after me for a long time by 
because I've been speaking to disaffected young men. Now, what a terrible thing to do that is. Of all the things that you're about to break down and cry for, it's like, come on, bro. Like, this remind me of one of those times you arguing with your girl. Y'all ain't even really talking about nothing serious. She might be on her, she might be menstruating, you heard me. And she just like, she just this close, her the tears start welling up in her eyes. And you like, wait, really? Like, what? You about, you about to cry right now? Like, what? What's going on? Right now, if I was Pierce Morgan, I'd be like making a stank face right now, like hoping the camera don't get me looking at him completely insensitively. Like, bro, what are you crying about right now? Oh, I know. You're crying about the fact that, you know, you're representing the men who are struggling up here while you too are struggling up here. Maybe you're crying about the fact that you're a false idol, a false prophet. You see, let me tell you all the truth of what you should find in your leader. You should look at your leader and feel strengthened by them, knowing that they are iron. Let their iron sharpen your iron. When you look at this guy crying on TV, do you feel stronger? I don't feel stronger looking at that. I personally, I feel disgusted. I don't even cry in private. I don't even want to see myself cry in private. Not because men are too strong to cry, but because crying has no utility. That is to say, use. For him to be all science focused and rational and logical, his fans, oh, you're Jordan Peterson, he's so logical. Look at how he debates the feminists. He's so logical and rational. What's the rationality of your tears, my boy? Have your tears healed anyone? Have your te tears changed society? What have your tears done other than make you look like an unstable loon? Let's hear what else he has to say. I thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. Well, I thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. You're calling grown men marginalized? The man is not marginalized. Do not position the male in our society in a weak position because when you position us in the weak position, weak in comparison to whom? The fairer sex? The female? You're calling males marginalized, which would mean that the female is the oppressor and the power player? It's laughable, my boy. When you hear of people being victimized, that's usually the female. When you hear of the one who went to jail for the sexual domination of someone, it's the male. Because the females don't even have the strength to defend themselves. They are inherently the weaker one. How mentally ill are you when you are ignoring nature and biology itself, which God, if you believe in God, science and biology, if you believe in that, has positioned us stronger. How dare you call the strong one the weak one? How dare you propagate that idea? You make the male weak when you speak like that. He is disgusting. The marginalized. Men are only marginalized because they think and speak like this. Promise you, if every man on earth was like Jordan Peterson, they'd continue to be marginalized. If every man on earth was like me, this would be an order in a jiffy. Because I will not bow down to my inferiors. A woman is physically inferior. A woman's leadership is inferior. A woman's emotional stability 30 days out of the month is not on the level of mine. I will not be led by her. I will lead. But he will be dominated, little softy. Little softy. It's cute. Look at him cry. Somebody put Jordan Peterson's tears in this cup. Collect some of Jordan Peterson's tears. Wow. Disgusting. Truly. And it's funny, too, because the people who follow him want to talk about alpha male. That's your alpha male right there? Comedy. Comedy. Shout out to Raymond comes in via 
Cash App writes, peace to the Saints tuition. Shout out to Heels in comes in with the consistent support. Appreciate it. A podcast for men, writes, Temple University is under investigation for data manipulation. Uh Uh-oh. YouTubers reference studies to support their claim. Indeed, they do. Yet data manipulation is very common. Oh, absolutely. Look at Twitter, for example. How much trust should people put in studies? Well, you have to look at the methodology. Every proper academic study, they define their methods. And in looking into the methods, you find where the lies lie. For example, this idea that everyone's sexuality is on a spectrum, this has been propagated by the left. This is not true. This idea was originated by Dr. Alfred Kinsey, no longer known as a doctor because he's been robbed of his letters because he was a liar and a fraud, also pedophile which is very typical of the LGBTQ, it turns out that the disproportionate number of pedophiles happen to be homosexual males, as was Alfred Kinsey. He wrote a whole study, a fictional fraudulent study about sexuality being on a spectrum. And not only on the spectrum was homosexuality, it was also pedophilia included, which is why eventually you're going to hear LGBTQ P for pedophilia, or as they're calling it, MAPS, minor attracted persons. Their whole movement is about sexualizing children and also bringing sexuality into the mainstream when really it's something for the private. Let us have some moralities and keep private things private. But anyways, I say that to say that was a study. His own lab worker, a female student who was academic and fortunately righteous, pointed out the error to him. He tried to sweep it away and silence her. And then she brought this to the academic community and they tried to recreate his study. Couldn't find the same conclusions because his study was falsified. But what happened is all those liberal media news outlets that put out the idea, oh, Dr. Alfred Kinsey, he's a hero pioneering in sexual psychology research, sex, uh, sexuality's on a, it's on a, it's on a, uh, Everyone can do anything they want. That's what it is. You can do whatever you want. Put your penis, whatever. Then when it was clarified, they never put the truth out with the same vigor that they have put out the initial lie. They did not promote the truth at the same level, partly because they didn't want everybody to know that they're wrong, but most importantly, because they subscribe to that because they're sexual perverts. Shout out to Ken. He writes, you are speaking about the Kinsey Report. Indeed, I am. Indeed, I am. Shout out to the real ones who have the knowledge. Yes, indeed. Carrying on. Back to the crybaby. It's making you emotional to talk about it. Well, God, you know. <laughs> well, God. <laughs> Look. Oh, they did him dirty. They put a close-up on him. They did him dirty with the close-up. <laughs> uh, let me do the Jordan Peterson face. I need to do a, a mixtape and have an ad lib. Well, God. <laughs> well, God. <laughs> and then <laughs> my album cover going to be like this. Is that the Jordan Peterson face? <laughs> That's going to be my album cover. This is great. Well, God, <laughs> what you got to say, JP? Go ahead, bro. It's very difficult to understand how demoralized people are. In cer- this is projection right here. By the way, shout out to Kevin, send me intuition by Cash App. You see, when you have someone who is fundamentally depressed, and I'm going to show you some more video clips, you're going to say, wow, Marquette, now that you mentioned it, I can see it. Now that you've mentioned it, I see it consistently. He is depressed and unhappy, which is nothing to make fun of, but it is important to say we don't want to follow that. No, we want to follow the big homie. Yeah, the one who's flying to Thailand, flying to India, flying to Amsterdam, flying to Monaco, flying to London when he feel like it and enjoying the most beautiful things of life and always has a smile on his back and some fresh, a smile on his face, fresh clothes on his back. That's what we want to be like. We don't want to be like this. Hell nah. Hell nah. Look, number one. Well, gosh, this world is so demoralizing. Is it demoralizing or were you already demoralized? Maybe because your issues with alcoholism and you as a scientist, as you would, he's a pseudoscientist, but you as as a man in the sciences, he's a pseudoscientist, you know that alcohol over the long term has an effect on your ability to be happy because it alters your neuroscience. Maybe one of the reasons you're not happy. You also were abusing psychotropic drugs, which also in the long term impairs your ability to be naturally happy. Maybe that's one of the reasons you're never happy, my boy. And because you're never happy, most human beings can't see beyond their nose, which is why you project that out into the world. It's so demoralizing. 
Is it really? Because I don't feel demoralized at all. I'm about to get off of this call, respond to a couple DMs, schedule this live with a nice young lady who's going to bring some great information to you guys. Then I'm going to go salsa dancing with some bad chicks who got some French accents, some British accents. You heard me? I'm going to make fun of their accent. We're going to have a good time. I'm going to hop on a jet and fly back to the States. What's demoralizing about that, bro? You crazy. Life's good. Life's really good. Yeah. What's this nut talking about? Certainly, many young men are in that category. Aww. And you get these casual insults, these, these incels. What do they mean? It's like, well, these men, they're, they don't know how to make... Think about the stupidity. These incels, well, what does that mean? It means involuntary celibate. Why, why are you acting like you don't know what that means? Incel, involuntary celibate. That's what it means. Quit playing games, bro. Now you're, you're touching your nose and your face. And as a person in psychology, we know that's called a self-comforting gesture. When you touch the self, it's self-comforting. Why does he need to self-comfort while having this conversation that's not about himself? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, he has to self-comfort because he is talking about himself. And that's why he's so sad and demoralized. You see, it matters who you get information from. You can get information from the sad, depressed guy, or you can get information from the guy who's thriving and trying to find a better way. You see, even the days when I do feel depression, not clinical depression, but that, that I'm down, my down is still a lot higher than Jordan Peterson's or most people because it's mindset trained over time. When I'm down, I can still work. And when I'm down, I'm still working on the things I know will lead to good outcomes over time. I'm investing in the bank of good things. Shout to Jaylon comes in via PayPal. He writes, his daughter recently divorced and recently married another man, another one. Also, her daughter, he put her daughter, has two last names. Ooh, lack of respect. Diagnosed with OCD. Uh-oh, you telling me that the daughter of the therapist has mental issues? That doesn't make good sense. Depression? Oh, really? And bipolar? God, she got everything. What's left? Wow. What's left? She got everything. You can't even diagnose her with nothing else. I don't even think I know of anything else we could diagnose Shorty with. Shout out to Linus comes in with support via PayPal. He writes, you make, excuse me, you made valid points, but why do you make more hit piece videos on RP slash conservative people than liberal SWJ content creators? Well, first off, Linus, number one, a hit piece is more like a propaganda piece. What I'm doing is clarifying fact from fiction. That's number one. Then number two, I'm not into RP and conservative. These are two fake camps. Neither of them stand for anything. It's sassin or nothing. So if you're not sassin, you're nothing. I don't care if you call yourself conservative, liberal, moderate, whatever you are. If you ain't this, you're nothing. We're not friends with anybody that's not of us. So now you understand, my dear boy. Now you understand. Yes, because the people who call themselves conservatives in America... They also support LGBTQ. How does that add up? How are you a religious conservative, yet you support LGBTQ? It's all corrupted. The conservatives are not conservatives. So it's sassin or nothing. We will not compromise. He writes, if anything, the liberals are the ones that are really misguiding and corrupting the youth. Duh. RP and conservative content creators may be off of Maybe off on some things, but they're not the main issue. Wouldn't you agree? I think I've taught better English than to say, wouldn't you agree? It would be proper to say, what do you think? Wouldn't you agree is to be suggestive. I don't need anyone to suggest for uh, what I need to think. Just ask me and I'll tell you. Um, so no, we don't agree there. Uh, you're right. The left is leading people in a more dangerous way. But here's the thing. If I were to speak to lift a fog off of someone's mind, is it easier to lift the fog from the mind of someone who is leftist or someone who considers themselves RP or conservative? I'm going to start here. It's called low-hanging fruit. They're more likely to be able to accept the light I'm providing.
So no, I'm not going to talk to the liberals or the liberal audience. I would be talking to people who are programmed zombies who will receive nothing I have to say. Even the Bible says do not cast pearls to swine. You just want to be in arguments. I don't have time for arguments. But thank you for that support. I appreciate it. Dimitri writes, it's important to detach from sad people. Tell me about it or you will become sad too. You ain't ever lie. He writes, blessings from Jamaica. Peace to the saints. Truly appreciate it. <laughs> oh, Jamaicans, you got to forgive me. I can't help but doing that, but do the accent. I just can't help it. I can't help it. In fact, I, I think I pretty much mimic everyone's accent when I'm talking to them. I try not to, but I just, I just get moved, get carried away. What can you do? You got to have fun in life. You got to have fun and enjoy. Uh, shout out to the JRK angle, writes, Peace of the Saints. Enablers of weak minded males are very hard to notice until it's too late. We catch, we'll catch definitely, we'll catch the replay. Got it. Thank you. Dallas writes, On point, big homie. We need new leaders at the forefront that live in reality and have results worth striving for. Peace of the Saints. Thank you. And the greatest result is happiness. I've said to you before, and I will say it now, you may not all become millionaires. And truth is, most people don't even want money that badly. But you should all seek to become happy every single day. That's the critical piece. Have good families. Be around good people. That's the critical piece. I mean, Jordan Peterson is slaying uh, psychological assessments on his website. It's comical. Here, take this personality test for $9.99. Like, what, bro? Really? That's what we got with it? That's crazy. Uh, Jose comes in by a cash app. He writes, JP, push that convid vax like every other fraud. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now we finding out what's what. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. In a real way, hit that subscribe button if you haven't. You'd be wise to. Let's see if JP says anything outrageous. Make themselves attractive to women who are very picky and good for them. Women, like, be picky. That's that's your gift, man. Demand high standards from your men. Fair enough. But all these men who are alienated, it's like they're lonesome. And You know what's ironic about Jordan Peterson? He's the hero to incels. He's the hero to these men who are challenged mostly the complainers, the weak among us, who can become strong if they'd stop listening to this guy. But he's the one who's their savior, yet he created and raised a daughter, raised a daughter who left a man, raised a daughter who divorced a man. And if you guys have ever heard Coach Greg Adams, I hear divorce is pretty unpleasant, and I hear that divorce always favors the female. So he raised a female who did the exact same thing he's claiming to be protecting men from. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm too good. Sometimes I amaze myself. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm too good. I'm too good. Wow. And, and they don't know what to do, and everyone piles abuse on them. When she said that, Olivia Wilde, it, it stung you, didn't it? I saw the oh, by that time, you know, that as far as, as criti critiques go, the answer is yes. Let me give you another piece of body language. We talked about the, the self-comforting gestures, which is when you touch yourself. You see Piers asked him a question. He then begins shifting in his seat and recentering, resettling himself. That's another major expression of being discomfortable, uncomfortable. When she said that, Olivia Look at, him. Look at the reaction, physical you. reaction. I saw the oh, reaction. by that time, you uh -oh. know. Reshift, shift. As far Why are you as, moving? as criti critiques go, that was kind of low level. I mean, once I see, there you go. He he betrays himself. He has the sweet, intelligent word for you. He has the word for you, but where's the reality? Where's the action? He's not living in it. He just saying it. Oh yeah, that will always be exposed. Okay, now let's go on to the next one. This one I really need you guys to pay attention to. I really need you to pay attention to. Check this out, this one out. This is important. This is where you come to your best understanding of Jordan Peterson right here. 
Tilly writes, that was a straw man, someone in their feelings about SAS speaking on Red Pill. So they created a narrative that SAS picks on Red Pill more in order to accuse SAS of some wrongdoing. Uh-oh, talk to me. Talk to me. I don't go by SAS, but whatever. Hey, whatever, man. Whatever. Um, now check this out, folks. Let me maximize this right here. There's a couple things to notice. Body language is absolutely critical. I'm going to enlarge this so we can really look at this body language right here. First off, this dude who's uh, interviewing him is not heterosexual. I'm going to just say that off of the rip, straight up. He's not heterosexual. I cross my legs, but it's super player. You dig? My uncles used to live like that. They, they, they're they real peas. You dig? I was raised like that. Um, so I might cross my legs, but I don't cross it like this with the calf all kicked back like that in skinny jeans that are spandex and probably are actually women's jeans. No, I don't, I don't, we don't live like that. So his, his legs cross like that turbo weird, turbo weird. Okay. Uh, so we already know he's guzzling Skittles and that's fine. You know, Hey, whatever food you like to eat, if you like to eat Skittles, Skittles carry on. Now let's look at Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is supposed to be teaching you how to be a man. Why is your body language so pained and and closed off. Look at him. His arms are crossed like a stubborn little boy who's about to throw a tantrum. He even has his legs crossed at the ankle. As a man, stay on your feet, my boy. If some pop off, I need you to be mobile, centered, and strong. This is highly weak, weak, closed off, emotionally fragile positioning. Arms crossed, ankles crossed, completely weak, closed off, and look at his face as well. And you're about to see what I'm saying. Man, I read through this boy. This is ABC123 right here. I read through him as clear as glass. Whoever thinks that a Jordan Peterson can debate a Marquette Devon Burton, you're ludicrous. He might cry. He might literally cry. He, he made me feel like Mike Tyson, you heard me? I want to eat his kids. I want to eat his kids. Make me feel like, oh, pause, pause. Not like that. I got to quick quote Mike Tyson. I got to quick quote Mike Tyson. Maybe Mike was guzzling Skittles. But you get the point. Here we go. Listen. Tensions. Mm -hmm. Are you happy? What's a better question for me to ask Jordan Peterson? How are you doing? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Look at Jordan. Why you look like that? <laughs> Jordan, why you look like that, bro? Why you look like you was just smoking your last cigarette? You was in front of the liquor store smoking your last cigarette. Somebody walked and just slapped that cigarette out your mouth. You look mad. Bro, why you look like that? Listen. Listen to his answer. He just said, Jordan, how are you? How are you doing? Oh, look at his face. He tripping, his head shaking. You might not be able to perceive it. He took like 20 seconds. He ain't said nothing. Brilliantly and terribly. Wow. Why are you depressed right now? You're, you're going through all these media tours trying to stack up more money, but you're not even in a state of mental health. Wow. The money is that, is that serious to you, bro? No, you need to be at home right now, my boy. You're not in a good mental place. We can all tell that. Yeah, clear as day. Shout out to Dimitri, comes right back on PayPal. Truly appreciate it. He writes, Peace of the Saints, hope all is well. The package for the sample bathrobes have been delivered. I'm confirming with you if it is true. Bro, I'm in London right now. I couldn't call it, uh, but I trust that it should be there. I'll confirm when I get back. But anyways, um, so this man said, Jordan, how are you? Jordan had made that, that face. Wait, let me see if I can make it. Hold on. Let me enlarge it real quick. Okay. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what's wrong with this man? He said, Jordan, how are you? And Jordan said, brilliant and terribly. Brilliant and terribly. Bro, what the hell is wrong with you? Can you just give me a normal answer, my boy? I say, how you doing, man? Just say some normal stuff like good. You know what I'm saying? Say some normal stuff like, oh, I'm straight. You know, say say some normal stuff, man. Like another day, another dollar. He needs to hang out around some black folks because they ask us how we doing. We going to say some cool stuff. You feel me? Man, this is brilliant, brilliant and terribly. 
terribly. Man, don't nobody want to hear this depressing stuff? What's wrong with this boy? Let's hear from him. Ugh, that was Nets. weird. Wait, that was weird. I want to throw up. Look how he just started doing this weird smile all of a sudden. Look, here you go. Brilliantly and terribly. Look at this weird smile after this. Nets. And then he go back to mean face. That was weird. He's struggling right now. You know, when you listen to a profound piece of music, this man is in a bad, bad space. And let me just tell you a little bit about Jordan Peterson personality types. This dude for sure was an incel. There's just no doubt about it. It's written all over him. He was an incel for sure. In high school, he was not winning. He, he was not winning. I promise you that. Bet my life and bet everybody's kid's life on that one. Now, here's the other piece to it. He has prided himself on academics because he's physically weak and feeble and he's scared, so he was never strong and confident enough to, to thrive in athletics, never confident enough to talk to women. So he prided himself on his powers of intellect, which are not you know, remarkable. He's diligent. They're not remarkable. And you'll notice in his common speak, when he's engaging interpersonally, he often tries to use polysyllabic words, and it doesn't quite sound right. And if you have a significant vocabulary, you'll find that sometimes his formulations, very academic, lots of circumlocution, sometimes he doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah, I said it. Sometimes Jordan Peterson doesn't make any damn sense, and he's actually trying to sound smart. And it's his actual personality because that's where he gets his relevance. Yeah, that's his only source of relevance is people thinking, wow, you're really smart, Mr. Peterson. So let's hear him try to sound smart. He mostly only sounds really smart when he's quoting other people. <laughs> let's hear him try to sound smart. One that sort of spans the whole emotional experience. It's not happy. Happy is elevator music. And probably you just shouldn't listen to that at all. Right. And, and you think, why? Well, first off, bro, we didn't ask you all that. We didn't ask you all that deep stuff. Bruh said, how are you? I'm brilliant and terrible. It's like a piece of music. It's like a piece of music that spans the whole human experience. Who likes happy? Happy is like elevator music. And you probably shouldn't listen to that. Bro, you are weird. Number one, elevator music is not happy. Number two, why would you discourage someone from being happy because you're not happy? Because you're not able to sustain happiness in your messed up mind. And in this moment, you're not happy. You're not even satisfied with being in the moment. You look like you're about to walk out of this interview and pop some pills and hope you don't wake up. You don't even seem like you're in the right state of mind. It's a, it's a chore to listen to you I don't want to hear your pain. It's just like rap music. I don't want to listen to rap music and hear people talk about, oh, I can't pay my cell phone bill. I'm about to get evicted from my house. No, we listen to rap music to hear about the good times. People want to talk about they iced out Rolly and they foreign car and their beautiful woman. And we want to ride along in that fantasy. We want to think about going up. We don't want to think about going down. And that's what he is on. And what happens is miserable people want someone to commiserate with because they feel low. That's why the internet hates to see someone who feels good. They become jealous and hateful because one, one who is not happy cannot be happy for you. I repeat, one who is not happy cannot be happy for you. Yeah, he said, misery loves company. You ain't never lied. Yes, indeed quite sad to see this. And that's when you know we're in a sick society because though he does say things that are relevant, we're holding up someone who's actually sick. On record, he's sick. On mental medication, he's sick. Said he wants to kill himself, he's sick. But we hold him up 
And he out here trying to scrounge for money, going on a media tour while he's clearly not well mentally and it's abundantly clear to anybody? Tell me I'm wrong. Shout to Khalil. Actually, don't tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. <laughs> Get this guy out the way. Khalil writes, peace to the saints. Sent you an email. Um, saying, and when will information about pre-orders for the black backpack briefcase be made available? Uh, good question. Uh, send that email and cc support at marquetism.com. C-C-S-U-P-P-O-R-T at marquetism.com. We'll shoot you back a note. I think we're about 88 days out. All being made for Uh, inside of this one, we actually have a holster for the UWAP, you dig? Because a man must be a protector. So we got a holster in there for the UWAP. So it's a, it's a great piece. Uh, you'll get it within 88 days. Or we'll send it out in 88 days. And for those who want to get their pre-order, you can make your pre-order at mdblabel.com. Shout out to Mitchell. He writes, maybe Jordan Peterson should purchase Conference 2 footage to see the progression of earned male leadership. You ain't never lie, bro. Because it seems like he's gotten stuck. On growing up. Yeah, that's a good recommendation for him. I appreciate it. It's funny how all those Jordan Peterson uh, acolytes, they disappeared. They, they disappeared. I think they might have showed up ready for me to say something that was untrue or invalid. And they're like, whoa, well, he does have the primary source right there. <laughs> the, the primary source is right there, proving all of his points correct. Yeah, indeed. Carrying on. Oh, shout out to Nigel. He writes, for tuition and the truth. Appreciate that. Back to JP. It, it's harmless. It's treacly. It's sweet. Uh, simple. It lacks depth. It's shallow. That's a problem. Um, it doesn't have that deep sense of awe and horror, I would say. What are you talking about? All he asked you is, how are you doing? You started going off on this meaningless, idiotic rant on who, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. I don't even know what you're talking about right now. Cause you're talking nonsense. You're depressed. And instead of saying I'm good and going on to the interview questions, you're just babbling right now. Okay. Look at this person. He writes, I, I'm a play center on this one. I don't think you're right, Saint. Well, that's cool, bro. Um, I could respect it if you just kept silent, but since you didn't, uh, we're going to get you up out of here. And I'm going to tell you why. Not because you're disagreeing with me, but because if you have a real disagreement, send it through a super chat so that we can read it and address it or ask to send a super chat and ask to come on and we'll let you come on and represent yourself. But if you're going to say something to me and try to detract from this message in a way that just makes me think that you're just trying to get yourself attention or you're speaking without thought, which is not manly, which is in contradiction to my teachings. We're just going to get you out of here because the real saints, I would hope, would speak in good English. And some of you, English might not be your first language. You're in a different country. I understand that. Or secondly, if you had something serious to say, you'd send it in the super chat. But it seems as though you're just um, you're just babbling and and we don't rock like that. We don't rock like that. If you happen to be uh, one of the members, let me know and I, I will unblock you or I'll consider unblocking you. But at this point, uh, you go deuces. And that's not to say people can't disagree. I invite you to disagree. Send it in the super chat so we know you're serious and you're not just playing games. If you don't have five dollars, mind you, if you don't have uh, excuse me, six dollars, if you don't have six dollars to your name, you're not worthy of even disagreeing with me because you got greater priorities. You need to be at work. If you ain't got $6, you need to be at work. Don't be disagreeing with me. Don't even be watching me. Go to work. Put in some job applications. You don't need to be speaking up on this. Huh? Yeah. Carrying on. And I, I, I got to click off of this, this link because this one is just freaking, freaking so boring. He's just not talking about anything. But just real quick, um, I've actually not even listened to this one, so I don't know what is said in it. But we're going to go into the next piece. Here we go. Now, here's Joe Rogan talking to uh, Jordan Peterson's daughter. So now Joe Rogan is a part of the farce. He's a part of the whole money ploy right now. Because in reality, how relevant is the daughter of Jordan Peterson? 
who is a divorcee. Is that what you guys want out of your life? You want to learn how to get married and then break your marriage? She is bipolar. Is that what you want? You want to follow someone who's bipolar? You want to learn how to be bipolar? Uh, she has OCD. That's what you want to, you want to have like weird tics. Yeah. Okay. She has all of these mental disorders, but why are we pushing her out to become famous and have influence over you and I? And why is Joe Rogan a part of this? Because usually Joe Rogan invites people on who are relevant. They're musical artists, they're accomplished fighters, they're intellectuals. Who is she? Who is she? No, really, who is she? Let, let's hear. Not much. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited. Oh, that was ironic. I just said, who is she? And she said, not much. What's happening? Not much. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. Uh, your father speaks very highly of you. That's good. What is it like to have Jordan Peterson as a dad? Is it weird? Do you have to check yourself constantly? Make sure you're on you're <laughs> on steady ground and not I say anything ridiculous? No. So we know that she's irrelevant when his first question isn't, so tell me about you or, oh, you've achieved this. Or, hey, can you teach the audience this? Or, hey, the audience requested you to come on. Nope, none of that. It was, oh, so what's it like to have Jordan Peterson as a dad? That's like me doing a YouTube and sending my mother in here. My mother's irrelevant. My mother is a regular black woman, a regular black woman that you can see at the grocery store buying groceries. She is not a special intellect. She doesn't have unique discipline. She's not a great athlete or a musician. She's not a, a, a towering intellect. And if I sent my mother on here, it would only be a ploy to raise her profile so she could collect some money from being a social media influencer. It would be completely irre uh, irrele irrelevant and inauthentic. It would be inauthentic of me to send my mother out here. Same with me sending my brother out here, which I could do. He's a young man, just like you guys, many of you. And that's what they're doing. They send this broad out there with a collection plate. Tell me I'm wrong. Actually, don't. No, don't tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. And you're going to avoid this stuff and you're going to speak up on it. Oh, by the way, shout out to the ballers. Baller alert. Nigel writes, tuition and the truth. Oh, he didn't came back twice. He didn't came in deuce times. Oh, it's two ballers. Think they come in pairs. Baller alert. Shout out to Austin. He writes, at work right now, stopping by to show love. Appreciate that. Shout out to the hardworking men, you dig? Not people who go out like Russell or Russell Peterson, uh, Jordan Peterson's daughter, panhandling, giving you nothing, asking for something. Yeah, there it is. White liberal female privilege. That's exactly what this is. And the funny thing is some misinformed youth who hasn't been soaking up the ism to an acceptable level, obviously, he was talking about conservative and liberal and RP. Well, which is Jordan Peterson? Look at this. This is a liberal white woman right here. We know this is a liberal white woman because she's a divorcee and she has two names. She didn't honor her man enough to just use his name and go under his name. Huh? She had to attach her name, which isn't even her name. It's her father's name. Wow, the pride and ego. Who wants a woman who has pride and ego? Wow. No, not at all. Not at all. I didn't realize it was weird until I went away to university and then kind of saw like just was away for a while. And then when I came back to the house, especially because the house is full of like paintings and masks and statues and like 32 different paint colors. And I came back and was like, oh, Maybe he's a bit eccentric. <laughs> no, he's definitely eccentric. Um, we were talking off air about him and how what was actually happening at the events wasn't what was being portrayed in the media. Of an angle. And I've talked to people who are writers who um, will write something and then I'll, I'll talk to them and I'll say, hey, man, this is not what we talked about or what happened. And they said, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even write that. The headline wow. was completely written by the editor. Thing that's entirely. How is it I just skipped ahead three times and Joe Rogan is still talking? The reason Joe Rogan, who's interviewing her, the reason he's still talking is because she has nothing to say. She's not accomplished anything and she is no one.
And it's okay being an average person, but it's not okay being an average person stepping in front of the masses and misguiding them for a dollar. Icing for them to click on it. Yeah, I guess. But I, wouldn't you say that's just driving them down? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, they're fucked. <laughs> it's, it's a bad p- place to be or watch their show. Article about dad. Oh, yeah. In like June or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he didn't make it any easier on himself. Are they still talking about Jordan Peterson during her interview? What? What? This is weird. I'm losing respect for Joe Rogan. But you know what I think happened? Let me tell you what I think happened. As a business guy, often you do a favor for a favor and you use network, right? So what I'm guessing happened is this. Joe Rogan reaches out to JP. Hey, JP, you want to come on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast? Jordan Peterson, being a business guy... Out for that bag says, Oh, hey, absolutely. He goes on, it does numbers, it, it enriches both of them. And then now that they've created a bond or relationship, then JP gets on the phone. Hey man, um, would you mind if my daughter comes on the show? Joe Rogan being a good guy, nice guy. Hey, we've done business, let's keep good relations. Yeah, for sure. Send her by. There you have it. Another example of how. The privileged white female with no skill, no talent, no name, no nothing gets to show up out of nowhere and over and just basically leapfrog all of you who have worked hard, got education, made a name for yourself. She gets to leapfrog you, get the money and attention maybe you would have wanted or you deserve. But what you have to understand, and you never understand this listening to Jordan Peterson, what you have to understand is that a man has to earn everything he gets. No one ever reaches out like, hey, Quet, I just want to do you a favor. Why? Just because you're you. Never have to scrape and scratch for everything I got. And that's true whether you're a white man, a black man, an Asian man, whatever color man. You could be a Jewish man. You're still going to have to scrape and scratch for everything you got. But sometimes women will get things just because they're a woman and they're pretty. Especially if you're a white woman. Oh, world is opened up to you like nobody's business. Woo. Indeed. Noted. Thank you. Carrying on. This is real comedy. And thank you to those who are supporting the work. Um, obviously, these go on as, as long or as short as, as you guys like. I'm just here to serve you guys. You know, I'm here to share the information I think you guys will find meaningful. And, uh, you know, when it you guys notice anytime it becomes not meaningful, I cut it. And I always thank you guys for taking out any amount of time to fellowship with me because I know your time is valuable. I know you guys could be doing any number of things. And so I appreciate you spending this time with me. Shout out to Immortal who comes in supporting the work as well as on health. He writes Spanish speaking and English as a second language from Brooklyn, uh, working 12 hours every day and going hard. Thank you for your work. Keep this good, real information. Appreciate that in a real way. So let's let's move from this one. I want to show you guys real quick uh, his daughter's website. And it's funny to me because you, you it just reeks of the fact that she's a, a uh, freeloader. Mc, Michaela or Macaulay, I don't know. Michaela, Michaela, Michaela Peterson. She even got herself a logo. Go ahead, girl. She got herself a logo. She's a bleach blonde. Okay, so she's a faker. It's all right. What's the description of her YouTube channel? Quote, I use the Michaela Peterson podcast. Oh, she has a podcast. Okay. Why, why is she famous, famous enough to have a podcast? Like, who is she? Oh, she's the daughter of somebody famous. Okay. As a chance to talk to thought leaders. Why do they want to talk to her? Who, who is she? Is she like a famous fighter like Joe Rogan? Is she a famous entertainer like Joe Rogan and a former actor like Joe Rogan? No, no. She's just a random girl. As a chance to talk to thought leaders, influencers, and industry changers. I do opposing views style episodes where I speak to people with differing opinions, blah, 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 blah. Nothing in here speaks to who she is or her credibility. Why? Because she has none. She has zero credibility. Yet, people listen. It's a fraud. It's a scam. And speaking of scams, here's a little article about Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson says he was suicidal and addicted to benzos. What? 
say it ain't so. That's your king. Let's read a little more. There he is in an oversized suit coat. This must be before he had money because that suit coat is oversized and he does not match. This is before he had money. Uh, Jordan Peterson in his new interview described his spiral into drug addiction and suicidal thoughts and then undergoing a controversial Russian treatment that placed him into an induced coma for eight days. Wow. Just to give you guys a little bit of side note, if you were curious, part of the reason they put them in an induced coma is because when you're getting rid of drugs out of your system, your body goes through what's called withdrawal, which is very painful. And so that the weak-minded and weak-spirited and generally those succumbing to drugs are in that state so that they can kind of skip that psychological suffering and that physical trauma, they are put into coma so their body can go through that recovery process and that withdrawal process without the mind being under the stress. In case you were wondering what that was about, that's what that was about. Okay, back, back to the article. The controversial Canadian psychology professor, along with his daughter, Michaela Peterson, talks about a downward spiral. Quote, I don't remember anything. This is a quote from December 16, 2019 to February 5th, 2020. Whoa, said the self-help author. Wow. Quote, I don't remember anything at all, end quote. Okay, so we basically got a dude who's an escapist. An escapist is one who tries to run from reality. That is what drugs do. They medicate you outside of reality. So you can fool your brain, your neurotransmitters into feeling good when you don't feel good so that you don't have to deal with, what, with what's real. The great irony that someone who can't deal with reality is teaching you how to deal with reality. So when you say, well, Mark, who are you to teach me how to deal with reality? Who am I? I'm the genuine article. I'm the one that actually started in the mud and got to the mountaintop. You can read about it in a book called The Black Box, which you can find on Amazon. I'm the one who came from the very lowest position in American society and reached the mountaintop through struggle and didn't once pick up any marijuana, didn't use any drug, never sipped alcohol, never even sipped coffee. I don't know what caffeine tastes like. Don't drink soda. The one who stayed straight edge the whole way, guided by God, is all you could say because there's no way in hell your mama's a dope thing, your dad's a dope seller, all your friends are dope dealers and dope users, and somehow you walk through that fire and come out unscathed. Yeah, I can tell you how to win. I can tell you how to walk through fire, because I lived in it. Jordan Peterson grew up soft and weak, and today he's soft and weak still. He don't know a damn thing about thriving. He don't know a damn thing about overcoming. He just knows about popping a goddamn pill so he can make the boogeyman go away. He ain't never had to look the boogeyman in his face. He ain't never been homeless. He don't know what struggle is. He go pay some rich Russian doctor to put him in a coma so he can skip the hard part. That's what he majors in, skip the hard part and then complain when you have to experience any bitter reality and run from being a man. Hide behind your big words and act like a feminine broad on TV and then start crying. But then position yourself as the leader of men than a man. It's pathetic. And if you follow Jordan Peterson as a leader, you pathetic. Straight like that. They foul. They put, and his daughter a hoe. Oh, that wasn't even necessary. Same day. I thought I was grimy. That wasn't even necessary. That wasn't necessary, but hey, as they say, it get like that. It get like that. Saints, uh, I'll give you a little bit of time to share your thoughts, questions, comments as we wind down. <sighs> I saw in the chat people were like, "Quit." What can you say about Jordan Peterson? 
<laughs> what couldn't be said? I'd rather take advice from my mailman. <laughs> you heard me? I'd rather take life advice from my mailman. Mailman be super cheery and up tempo when I see him. Here's a quote from his daughter, quote, dad started to get super weird. It manifested as extreme anxiety and suicidality. I don't even know if suicidality is a word, but I'll take her word for it. You know, I'm not really around people who display these traits. Suicidality, the hell is that? I saw the, oh, wow, here we go. Um, the Times reported that he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. That sounds bad. Wow. That sounds bad. I'm look, I'm not even gonna go through this this article because it is is disheartening to to hear these kind of things. He down bad. He down bad. But one thing. One thing Jordan Peterson knows how to do is push out that collection plate. <laughs> he even sent his daughter out to collect that bag. <laughs> you dig? Wowzer. Wowzer. <laughs> Shout out. He puts Marquette helping JP fans to quit cold turkey. For real, though, man. It's the Warrior King and his YouTube thing in a real way. Shout out to Jack. He writes on point per usual. <laughs> True story, man. True story. We, we just out here telling the facts. Nothing extra. Nothing extra. Uh, shout out to Immortal, Immortal Vibes supporting the work. Oh, and by the way, shout out to the Ballers. Taekwondo writes, much love to your family from Philly. When they come to Philly, Philly, I'm stepping up to the center. Black Box was a testimony to deep issues in the community and you taking your power back in your story. I was halfway through and left it on the flight I was uh, reading on so i have to reorder the copy had to show love you know what that might have been divine intervention that you left that someone might have come upon that seed and picked up a, a real gift you know sometimes life happens like that and thank you for the support and thank you for sharing your testimony with everyone so that they might be able to pick up this piece of literature that might you know carry them forward or take them out of a dark space you know instead of picking up drugs they might pick up some meaningful knowledge so thank you very much for that so shout out to Ty in a real way. Uh, may I acknowledge, okay, I thought I heard someone came in by a cash app. Maybe it's delayed. Uh, Saints, let us end with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time. Peace of the saints.